Do you know that you should shoot more video in your real estate business, but you're not sure what the topic should be? Today, I wanna to share with you 21 different videos that you could shoot right now that'll make an impact in your business. One of the biggest questions I always get is, is what should I be doing video wise? I'm just not sure what to do. So what I wanna do today is I'm gonna share with you 21 different types or titles for videos that'll hopefully get maybe your creativity to start moving around a little bit, give you some ideas of some things you can do. Listen, if you're not sure exactly what these videos should be about, I'm gonna give you really the basis for these, the titles for these. I would suggest going to YouTube, looking up the very title you're talking about, and odds are somewhere around the country, someone shot a video about this. Watch three or four videos that you see other agents doing with the topic you're doing, bring it back to your local market, and then adjust those things where it's applicable to your exact client you're looking for, and I promise you're gonna start getting some results. So let's start with this. Number one, five things people should do before they put their house on the market. This is a great way for you to begin to see people that are getting ready to put their house on the market. Who is this going to attract? The person that wants to watch that video is somebody that's getting ready to put their house on the market. So make sure you're highlighting specific things people can do to dress their house or prepare their house to be sold. Listen, we can do these things off the top of our head. Remove the clutter. Make sure that you've got the landscaping where it makes a good first impression when they drive up. All the things that you tell people, put that in a video format, put that out there, and have a call to action at the end that has something along the lines of, if you're curious about some of the things you could do that can make your house sell for the highest price in the fastest time, reach out and be glad to give you a free no obligation walking through your house and give you an idea of exactly what you should do. If you'll do that video, I promise you'll start having some sellers raise their hand and let you know they're getting ready to put their house on the market. Number two, the five biggest mistakes that sellers make when they put their house on the market. This is another one of those where attracting sellers. What is it that you see that sellers do? Overpricing, whatever it is, not, not getting their house ready to put on the market. Those things that you're looking for. Again, go to YouTube, search that up. I promise this is another one of those that's gonna help you identify sellers before they become listings. Number three is five reasons people love living in whatever neighborhood it is that you're farming. Listen, this is a perfect opportunity for you to show that you're out there actively working to attract buyers to the neighborhood that you're farming. It does two things. It's gonna help you attract those buyers. It's also gonna give you the ability to let sellers see that you're out there hustling. So not only now are you doing the typical things you're doing when you're farming that neighborhood, now they're gonna see you adding video, which is attracting people, which makes you even more attractive as a listing agent for those homeowners. Number four is, should I sell my house right now? Now this is a great one to help people identify. Now this is not just for finding listings right now. This is great for you to be able to attract people that are considering selling now or into the next maybe year, year and a half. What this video is about is just basically breaking down the market. Listen, we're at a place where we've never seen this amount of strength. If you're considering selling in the next 12 months, might be a great time to sell into strength, which is what every seller wants to do. Basically putting together and answering the questions, is it a good time for them to sell right now? We can't say what's going on in their personal situation, but we can give them an overall view of the market that helps them make the best decision for themselves. Number five is unsolicited video CMAs. If you have not done one of these or you've not heard me speak about this before, this is a place where you would go to anyone that's mentioned they might sell in the next couple of years or a homeowner you know, and you would do an unsolicited CMA where you would record your screen, go through a range of the value and send that out to them in emails. I did this. It generated over $11 million worth of listings through 72 of these that I did in the last quarter of 2018. I'm telling you right now, if you're looking for a way to impact your business, go out and do video unsolicited CMAs. Number six, I was in the neighborhood. This is a great way where that you can keep in touch with past clients or maybe someone that mentioned they were thinking about selling. If you're driving through a neighborhood and you have someone that you sold a house to and you see that their car's not there, pull over in front of the house and do a quick selfie video, basically just saying, hey, I was in the neighborhood, stop by, you guys weren't here, just wanna let you know I was thinking about you, let me know if I can help in any way, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Quick selfie video, high impact, keeps you top of mind, not just if they're considering selling, but it also gives them the ability to keep you top of mind when they hear of friends or family that are thinking about buying or selling real estate. 
Number seven is a neighborhood sales update. This is where you're just reviewing what are the sales that have happened in a neighborhood over the last three, six months. You're also talking about what's actively on the market and any contracts that are out there that are pending now or places that are in escrow. This gives you really the ability to continue to stay top of mind for your homeowners in that neighborhood and the potential buyers in that neighborhood. If you're consistently giving value and you're consistently showing what's going on in certain neighborhoods, you're gonna consistently have a lead flow of buyers and sellers for that neighborhood. Number eight is five reasons you shouldn't buy in a certain neighborhood. I love the way Trudy Van Horn did this. She put a little spin on this. Instead of it being negative, which is what's going to make people click that, it would be something along these lines. Listen, don't buy in this neighborhood if you don't like having the ability to have a sidewalk that wraps around and gives you a place to walk the dogs in the afternoon. Maybe it's something like this. Don't join this neighborhood if you want to be around other families because this neighborhood has a number of families with different age groups for people that have younger children. You see, when you spin it a little bit, you almost do a little bit of a clickbait on that title there, but you give them things that are actually positive, promise you it's going to spin things in a way that's going to get you a lot of results. Number nine is an overall market update. This should be done at least every quarter. I would suggest every month where you're just basically saying, hey, here's where we are in relation to this time last year. Average price is up this amount. Average price per square foot is up this amount. The average days on market, which tells us how much people are out there looking or how long it takes for an average house to sell versus this time last year. Just giving them general overall numbers on what's going on in the market. An understanding of how much inventory is there now versus last month versus last year. Being the expert in the community is absolutely going to help your business grow. Number 10 is five things you should know before buying in. This is whether it's a neighborhood or a community. You want to give them some statistics on sales information. You want to give them the average size of the house in the neighborhood. You want to give them how close they are to certain things. Basically, you're just going to give them general demographics of that neighborhood, where they can make a decision on whether it's the best place for them. Number 11 is what people love about living in, again, neighborhood or in the community they're in. If you're doing a neighborhood, this is where you're going to highlight the amenities. You're going to talk about they love the fact that it has a workout facility in the neighborhood. They love that it has a pool in the neighborhood. They love that it's close to whatever it is. They love the fact that there are walking trails or whatever the neighborhood has. Highlight the things that people love about a neighborhood. Very positive piece. Again, reinforcing you as the expert in that area. As you begin to do more and more where you're focusing, especially with your keywords, on a certain neighborhood or community, all of a sudden Google's going to begin to rank you higher. All of a sudden the people that see your posts on social media are going to begin to understand that you're the expert and the resource for that area. Area. And as we know, when you're viewed as the resource and the expert in a specific neighborhood, you're going to dominate in that neighborhood. Number 12 is what people hate about living in a neighborhood. Now this sounds kind of crazy, but we do this just to call things out. There's certain things. I mean, listen, we're in a coastal community right here where we're at, subtropical atmosphere. Let me tell you what people hate. Humidity that happens here. Traffic during the season. They hate the fact that we have um, pretty um, active bug community at certain times during the year in here. When you highlight the things and you just call them out, the things that people don't like living here, it gives you the ability for people to trust you because you're not just out there just trying to sell them on everything. You're trying to give them all the information so that they can make the best decision for them and their family. Number 13 is should I rent or should I buy in whatever it is, your neighborhood or your community? Listen, this gives you the ability really to break some things down. What is the average rent in the neighborhood that people might be considering either buying or renting in? How much is it that the mortgage payment would run if they were to purchase? When you compare these things and you show them the value of ownership, especially right now, Odds are it's going to give you the ability to find some clients that may be renting that can then become buyers for you, which ultimately then get in your cycle of business and five to six years from now begin to be your sellers again when they list the property and they move up. You see, rent versus buy is a great video if you're looking to find some new first-time home buyers, also to build your business with some buyers that are really, it's going to make financial sense and you can really help them not just to buy a house, but to put themselves in a better financial situation. Number 14 is check this out. These are really more of the type of videos that you would use for social media. This would be like if you're in a place and you see a house or you see a, a kitchen that you just can't believe. Check out this great kitchen and just do a quick pan around, post that on social media. Check out this amazing outdoor living space at this house post that up. If you'd like to see photos and details of the house that goes with this great backyard, click here. Drive them to a website. Drive them to the information on the property. You see, when you do those things, you're not just, people love those things to start with. There's a reason why you see so many of these TV channels 
that are just killing it with these real estate, um, with these shows, is because they are, people are so interested in seeing what's going on in houses, whether it be that they can do something where they renovate in theirs or dreaming of making that move. This is a great way for you to drive some traffic to a specific site, specific property, specific listing you might have, and really add value to people. Number 15 is coming soon videos. This should be done with every single listing you take. This is the opportunity for you to go out in front of the house and say, hey, I'm out in front of this great new listing. We're waiting on photos. They're gonna be coming in three to four days. If you'd like for more information, this is a three bedroom, two bath house in this neighborhood. Just reach out to me and I'll be glad to get you the details before it actually hits the market. This is a great way for you to be able to attract some buyers or for people to raise their hand that are considering buying before, without really being salesy. You're giving them information they can't get anywhere else. Make sure you're taking advantage of your new listings or your coming soon listings by shooting those coming soon videos. Number 16 is open house walkthroughs. Make sure every single time you're doing an open house that you're doing a video walkthrough and then you're promoting that an hour or two before your open house. It gives you really the ability to make sure that people it stays top of mind in case someone wants to come see the open house. It also gives you the ability to let people walk through and see something that they might not be able to come to the open house. By taking advantage of these open house opportunities, utilizing video to make sure that you're sharing those things, you're going to increase not only your traffic on the day of the open house, but you may may just find someone that just happened to not be able to come to the open house but might be interested in that house as well. Number 17 is the story of my favorite transaction. Listen, we've all got those things that if I say, hey, what was your favorite closing that you had or the favorite person that you worked with? that came to mind immediately. Why not tell the story of that? Listen, what we focus on, we attract more of. So are we focusing on the fact that we want to tell the story of that great transaction? Because when you do that, it gives you the ability not only to find those right people, but it attracts the people that you're supposed to work with. We call them OKP, our kind of people. If you're sharing the stories of your kind of people, I promise you're going to draw more of your kind of people. Number 18 is my funniest transaction. Listen, when you get transparent with people, when you tell the stories, when you have self-deprecating humor, it attracts more people. What was the transaction that it just seemed like everything went wrong on? What was the transaction that, you know, you can't believe certain things happened? And now looking back, it may have not been funny then, but it's funny now. Tell those stories. By being transparent, by sharing stories, you're going to attract exactly the ideal client for you. Number 19 is my worst transaction. Tell the story of that transaction where everything seemed to go wrong and tell how you saved that transaction. We're doing two things here. Um, unfortunately, you know, drama draws a crowd, but if you tell the drama and then you talk about the solution you gave, how you overcame it, you're going to begin to give more and more confidence to the people that are watching you from a little bit of a distance that, hey, I can take care of things. Even though this went sideways, I was able to bring it in line and now my buyer or my seller was happy that we walked through everything because it was worth what we went through. Show them that, you're, that they can have confidence in you that no matter what comes during a transaction, you can handle it and I promise you're going to draw more people. Reasons I love referrals. Tell some stories about clients or past clients or people that you know that have sent you referrals and how much you appreciate them sending those people and now how you've become friends with those folks. Where it's like they've sent people to you to buy a house, but now they've become friends or even almost as close as family. You see, when you share the fact that people sent you referrals and how much you appreciate it, all of a sudden it just almost it activates them thinking about who is it that I could send over to them? Because when they see how you take care of people, they're going to want to send other people to you or those first time people and then that leads to more and more referrals as you go forward. Last but not least, number 21 is frequently asked questions. What are the questions you get asked every single day it seems like? Is it something along the lines of, what do I need to do to get qualified to get a loan? What should I do before I make an offer on a place? What does an inspection time period look like? Think about those things that you're asked or those questions that you seem to constantly have to answer. Make a video about that specific topic. And I promise when you answer the questions before they're asked, people are going to all of a sudden begin to say, wait a minute. There's something going on here. I know I want to do business with that person. All right, there's 21 basically video ideas that I just gave you. Hopefully it helps you churn out some additional ideas. I'd love to see what ideas you have or some of the videos that have worked great for you. As I always say, as a real estate community, we're all better together. Do us the favor in the comments section below. Make sure that you leave those comments about the things that you've done, the videos that have worked for you, because when you share those, I promise if we all share those ideas together, we're all going to get better. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.